Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hello, friends. Welcome to Mavs Moneyball After Dark. You are joining me from a busy media room. It's the only place I could actually find internet and the ability to talk to you guys. So... Uh, I apologize for some of the background interference. I'm going to be muting myself when I'm not talking. Today, I am joined by my good buddy, Jose, who runs or co-hosts the excellent uh, 77 Spaces out there on Twitter. Uh, you should follow Jose. I'll put his uh, Twitter in the show notes, and he can tell you. I don't think he wants to read his Twitter name out loud. It's just like me, where it's like if you do that, sometimes it sounds really stupid. Um, I hate saying my Twitter name out loud, and I should probably change it. Jose, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing fine, Kirk. Uh, I'm glad to be on this platform. Of, of course, you know, I've joined several uh, Spotify lives now. I was about to say the other word, but I don't know how that impacts your uh, revenue. So, uh, but I'm glad to be here. It's hot. Um, I mean, this 100 degree weather is brutal. How about you, Kirk? How is Vegas so far? So Vegas is about 110 and I got to the game an hour beforehand to get my credentials and the NBA had screwed something up with the credentials. So there's this line of people outside in the sun in Vegas waiting to get our credential line. So I've just, I've already sweat through my shirt before the game even started. It was really, it was really something else. And, um, you know, I get, get there right as tip off, uh, is going on. You see Jaden Hardy out there on the floor wearing some absolutely gorgeous Kobe's. Um, and then from there we were treated to, you know, I've watched a lot of summer league basketball. That's got to be one of my favorite Maverick games that I can ever remember playing. Now, we're burying the lead a little bit here. We haven't even mentioned the fact that the Mavericks fell 100 to 99 to the Chicago Bulls. But part of that is because, to a certain degree, summer league games, like the outcome doesn't really matter. You're watching games for process. You're watching games to see what things you can take away that might be worth thinking about in like an NBA context. And in today's game against the Bulls, Second round rookie Jaden Hardy put on a really, really fun show. What did you think? To mention, this game went into overtime. Uh, you mentioned the fact a very exciting summer league game, like last with with Carly Jones, uh, Eugene Am- Amarui, and I'm forgetting. Uh, one of the other guys, uh, Nate Hinton and uh, Farouk uh, Hunt, I believe. I mean, it was man, th- this just tops it. Like, it, it was really, really fun. I ha- I'm not gonna lie, Kirk. Uh, it was it was kind of messy basketball. Just a lot of turnovers. A lot of guys forced. Started to see players get it more more calm as the game was going on in the, the first quarter, which was very uh, interesting. That's when we started seeing more uh, off ball activity with Hardy, with Lawson. So overall, this game was very very fun to watch. So I think it's worth just sort of really overreacting to Jaden Hardy where in this game, so he scored 28 points, 9 of 19 shooting, 2 of 7 from 3, 8 of 11 from the line. It was kind of like the entire experience as far as what you could have really hoped for. Um, I think that there's a lit. depending on what you've looked at online or if you've watched videos of him or if you followed him since high school, he, he's been labeled a, like a point guard at times, but to me, he's... He's really a a scoring guard. You know, he's got these arms that really, really go. And 
it, it's it's wild watching him on the dribble because he sets up like his crossover dribble really nice where he because he just has this massive wingspan and he pulls the ball really wide and goes through. He's really smooth. Um, and one of the concerns heading into summer league was he had a really hard time in the G League finishing. And you know, at least early this afternoon here in Las Vegas, finishing didn't seem to be a, a particularly hard problem for him. Um, he got to the line and drew contact with those long arms, kind of the same way Spencer Dinwiddie does. Uh, and he he showed a lot of offensive game, you know, a, a variety of stuff. There was a, in the fourth quarter, he hit this uh, was from like the right, ba- like right baseline. He hit this like gorgeous step back to that looked like something out of a video game. I mean, it was just beautifully executed and it, it was fun watching him. Now, I, I think the, the, before we sort of, before we dip into like potential criticisms, what were the things offensively that you like seeing from him? You, you kind of mentioned it. Uh, don't remind me of Dinwiddie. And I, I was like really satisfied to watch him just really get into his lane and really pick his shots because uh, again, uh, the, the criticism was he can't finish and that's all he tried to establish at driving and getting his feel for the game and I just really like seeing play physical basketball and Hardy just lived up to the to the reputation of physical basketball um some of the criticism that I did see uh that I had noted a while back when I was watching some uh scout video goes and does end up getting doubled he tries to split the defenders and even sometimes dribbles into them where he loses the ball and that was something that that you know clearly showed up in this game so uh, I'm glad we have Sham God there because Sham God is really going to help him with his dribbling moves and I can't wait to see the how he's going to look after these uh next couple of games as well so that's very interesting you saw that while while kind of looking at film with him because what you just described dribbling into to traps and turning the ball over is quite literally how the Mavericks lost this game <laughs> um where Hardy had uh Hardy had two turnovers in like one in like the final 30 seconds and one in overtime that directly led to Marco uh I think his name's Simonovich something like that his his buckets and that that ended up being the key difference in the game now it's not something like i'm harping on again you know honestly if he hadn't had made those two mistakes i think we'd be like screaming about how insanely good he was and these those two mistakes sort of brought things back to earth a little bit well it just shows that that you know he's a work in progress i mean he's 19 uh you know just continuously going to improve and I really thought it was 30 when he had been about 31 if um what's the guy uh Brigham uh didn't set the pick and and draw the the offensive foul because that that three that he shot was money after they called foul on it but uh Lawson had a very like standout game as well as Marco and I, I did like Terry from the Chicago Bulls as well because Terry's uh, yeah, the, the matchup against Hardy was fun to watch. Uh, I like how they were both trying to drive into each other and, and generate some contact. And, you know, Marco w- was physical. He was going after rebounds. He was finding his uh, shots. And then Lawson just has a really clean shot. Like Heinz is it very fast, and I just love it. Like if I could watch replays of Lawson's shot, I would probably spam it for about an hour just watching how he pulls up. Because when he pulls up and is just straight off of catch and shoot, that man is money. Well, and this is the thing I you know this happens every summer league. Like I just don't have. I don't overly invest in summer league guys beforehand because there's often no point because you don't really know who's going to get to play. I mean, we wrote a piece at Mavs Moneyball, like five, you know, five of the most intriguing players. Lawson was not on that list. Um, I'm wondering, did you tell us about Lawson? Because he's a South Carolina guy. 
And and Lawson, you know, I'm I'm reading his bio right now. He he's six six. He it says he's 179 pounds, which when you're getting like when you're listing things and uh, uh, that specific, it usually means you weigh less <laughs> because I mean this dude is skinny, but he was relentless, and that was really that was really fun um, watching how he played. You know, he went undrafted last year. Uh, it seems that he played. Where did he play? Uh, 26 games in the G League. He spent a little time uh, overseas, and so I, I don't. He, you know, if the Mavericks were more developmentally labeled team, he probably would would get a, a lot more interest from us. Like if it was like 2016 or something like that, a player like him is. You know, that's how the Mavericks ended up with some of these really good undrafted guys. But uh, I'm going to be interested to see how he plays because he he kept for as good as Hardy was. It was Lawson who actually kept the Mavericks in the game. I mean, he had six threes and what should have been the game-winning dunk. I mean, he was really fun in 30 minutes. Right, and he was just really engaged defensively. Like, he was attacked very <laughs> constant in, in that factor, and I really like his bounce. I believe he uh, – no, that that's the baby Westbrook who had a 43-inch vertical. That but was cool. He Ma- had, like, Ma- a Austin dunk at the end of the third quarter. Baby Westbrook did. Le- Le- yeah. Le- What's his name? Leclerc? I can't remember. Go ahead. <laughs> but but Lawson, I, I really like how he was able to just really get after it, whether it was offensively or defensively. Uh, just really energetic guy. Uh, he honestly didn't look, uh, what, what did you say, 175 pounds? Yeah, at, at most, like soaking wet, maybe with bricks in his shoes. Like, he was a skinny dude, and it did not matter. Right, and and he took contact as well. So it was it was just fun to watch some guys. I will have to say, um, Moses Wright, uh, he kind of disappointed me in a sense because uh, he's the guy we had on our two way last year, and he was able to get some weak side blocks, but he he's. Uh, whenever he sits, uh, sets up the the screens, he kind of got into some foul trouble with that because he was either leaning into them <laughs> or he was just late to set set the pick. But Moses Wright is a guy that I'm willing to to watch more of just because I like his athleticism, I like his length, and I I really think that he could be. Not traditionally a three and D wing, but just a guy who could give you some really great defense and some athleticism at the rim. What do you think about uh, Moses Wright, Kirk? I mean, in person, his wingspan is ridiculous. It's it, it's almost it's almost cartoonish how long his arms are relative to how tall he is. His hands look really big. Uh, he had one block in the first quarter kind of at the rim on a recovery thing where having those six inch longer arms can really make a, a bigger difference. But in terms of like actually playing like a team basketball concept, he still is so, so much like a, a bundle of tools. Um, there wasn't really one specific thing that I would say he could hang his hat on, like as an NBA level guy in terms of a skill set. I think what you said, like, kind of being like a trying to think how to phrase this without being like ridiculously offensive on accident, but he's, he's, he's a, if, if he's going to play like at the NBA level, he has to, everybody else on the floor has to be like highly skilled and he can kind of be the, the cleanup guy to a certain extent, because that was, that was what he was doing tonight. He was trying to get offensive rebounds. You know, he had one nice kind of like uh drive from the right corner that went in with a hook shot. Like there's something there. I, I just don't know how the Mavericks could potentially mine it with the team that they have set up right now, you know? I will say that uh, Moses and Hardy definitely have a chemistry. You could see them dapping up each other uh, during timeouts, fouls. Uh, they're talking to each other constantly. So there, there is some, some uh, relationship. He's going to be somebody I'm definitely going to keep my eye out eye out on and I, i'm pretty sure lawson after today is already getting some some buzz around other nba teams uh is there anybody from chicago that that stood out to you kirk 
I mean, besides, honestly, because one of the things, you know, people often ask me why I don't go cover games in person. There is so much going on at all times. It's hard for me to take good notes. Um, I didn't really pay a ton of attention to Chicago guys because I was just writing Maverick stuff down on repeat. I mean, the the former second rounder who Marco Semenovich or whatever his name is, he had 27 and 13, including six offensive rebounds. He may, he, he, he it, it's so funny that of course the Mavericks have like offensive rebounding troubles against the Golden State Warriors. And that's sort of how the season ends only to roll into uh, summer league and immediately have problems on offensive rebounding. But I, it, you know, I, I, I will probably watch Chicago again if I can catch them while they're here. Um, it's kind of an up and down game and they just kind of came alive at the right time, take advantage of, of Mavericks uh, mistakes. But I, I, nothing stood out to me, but that's more a me problem than a Chicago bull problem. What about you? What'd you see? Well, uh, I just really liked uh, Marco's hustle and, and again, Terry just being a bigger guard and trying to get hit me like just impress me as somebody who who just likes to watch basketball i mean we're watching summer league basketball a lot i mean i've seen some really fun players like keegan murray uh chet really impressed in the first game kenny lofton jr like i'm having fun watching this this year's uh summer league i didn't get to watch Jaden and ivy last night i'm i'm kind of sad about that but i'll catch that Kirk. um since you were actually there, uh, there was a Nico Harrison uh, kind of like broadcast interview as well as Christian Wood interview. And I think before the game started, I wasn't able to catch it, but I saw a snippet of Jason Kidd uh, talking to Malika Andrews and the rest of the uh, NBA crew. But uh, Christian Wood, <laughs> he said that Jason Kidd told him the first thing that uh, he wants is defense. And he just looked really giddy talking about Luca and how he'll work and play off of Luca. So that makes me uh, happy, excited. Uh, he definitely doesn't look like he has a problem with JaVel McGee starting. Even Jason Kidd on, on the broadcast has said something to Luca didn't with he is, uh, one when we first, first start the season. So that's going to be interesting because – the point guard position off the bench is a little bit tricky. I mean, we might see some split minutes. The Jalen Brunson saga still has not completely ended yet. <laughs> the bittersweet ending of the Jalen Brunson era. And um, I will say that oh, I was I forgot my other point. But uh, Nico, he talked as if, well, this is something that we haven't – well, we have heard from Nico already is that they were initially planning to lose Jalen Brunson. Have you heard that already, Kurt? Because I, I could have sworn I heard Nico say I that. I mean, if, if, I, if that's the case, then they all need to be raked over the coals for not trading him at the deadline, at the trade deadline. Like, the, I, I, I didn't hear that, and I, I do know – there's the Jason Kidd – interview is like up on ESPN. I haven't watched it yet, so I'll probably do that at some point later tonight. Um, I, I will say at this point in the offseason, a lot of what they're saying is basically filling airtime for ESPN. You know, they're all here to watch. Like most of the Mavericks that are under contract were at the game, except for like Luca. It was pretty, it was pretty crazy. You know, at one point, you know, there's Josh Green, Theo Penson, Maxi Kleba, uh, Christian Wood, Reggie Bullock, um, it was, it was fun to see everybody there, uh, which is, is nice. It's, like, it's a day game in Vegas. So, I mean, I suppose, you know, it's, it's, it just shows that, that they're really trying to, to continue to force like, or, you know, to push team chemistry and everybody being on the same page. Um, I, I have yet to see the wood thing though. People were sending me kind of audio and what he said, I did get some angry direct messages from people about, um, <laughs> Apparently, Nico said something to the effect of, well, you know, Tim Hardaway is like a free agency addition because he didn't play very for the second half of last year. And, like, I get the sentiment, but it also just <laughs> – after you lose a key player in free agency, like, nobody wants to hear how the guy who is already on your team is like a free agent. Like, even if I understand the sentiment. But, you know, right now I'm still sort of withholding kind of judgment because I just can't believe that they're done done, if that makes any sense, because – you know, you can't like McGee and Powell 
are two sides of the same coin where JaVel McGee for most of his career has put up a lot of empty stats versus Dwight Powell for most of his career has not put up stats at all, but does a lot of little things on the floor. So it, it, it's like they traded one kind of center or they, they brought in one kind of center to sort of do things that the other didn't, but I don't necessarily think he contributes to winning in a big way, but you know, I also don't want to overreact because if McGee plays 15 minutes, that's who cares? You know, it's, it's the, the Mavericks do need someone else to eat up 15 minutes. We saw that in the playoffs. So I'm, you know, at the moment, I'm still a little frustrated at the off season, but not, I'm not like I normally get <laughs> during these sort of periods. Hmm. Jaden Hardy's performance kind of like wipes away <laughs> some of the, the current off season uh, progress, but I, I, I know we kind of wanted to keep it summer league, uh, but like this starting lineup being guys who are over six, Jaden Hardy being 6'4", Josh Ivan. Think about if you look at OKC, uh, the Clippers, for goodness sake. Do you, do you think it's a, get a, well, trying to get on right now with guys 6'6 uh, six, six and 6'10? Six, I can see what they're going for. I I don't know. I still want to reserve some judgment. I, I just, part of me is still confused where you get to the NBA conference finals playing a certain way. And now you're tilting back a different way with the team that you're building. I, I don't entirely understand that, but I'm willing to sort of let it play out. You know, if they, they started playing one way at the start of last year, and then they went back to a different way. Like it, we all talk about how, Oh, well, Luca just got in better shape. Well, they stopped running some of the offensive stuff that they were running. You know, they, they went back to kind of a simpler version of, of, of pick and roll. So, well, we'll see where things go. Jose, do you got any uh, closing remarks? Because I have to, uh, have to after this, I'm going to have to edit and, and get some things up. And uh, then I want to go out in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, closing things, the the reason why I had to ask Hai is because it's something we've been discussing on, like, hoop spaces and then, like, uh, a little bit on 77 spaces. Uh, and then, you know, Jason Kidd in that little snippet, he talked about, we got bigger and it's, it's no offense to Jalen Brunson's height. So that's another reason why I wanted to pick your brain. But other than that, I will say, uh, just, uh, keep coming to Maz Moneyball for some great content, for some great articles. And not everybody agrees with Maz Moneyball content or articles, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> sure, no, We're all trying to get di- diversity of, of, of arguments of things that we actually don't get any say in. It's lots of fun. But uh, uh, quick remarks. The Matrix was there talking to Jerry West. Uh, Kirk <laughs> was right by the logo man and a fan. If you want to look at that picture, go to Kirk's that was funny. page on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. That was and, weird. Uh, <laughs> and then 77 spaces will be back later on in the week to recap some uh summer league games as well i appreciate you kirk for bringing me onto your platform sure thing jose we will talk soon um everybody this has been kirk and jose for mavs moneyball after dark um and you guys will hopefully have a great weekend and we will talk next week today's episode is brought to you by cars.com With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical.